Hi everyone, I'm Marinko Spasevich and in this video I will talk about using roles in Web API authentication with identity. I already covered the registration and the authentication flow and now you'll see how roles fit into the story. So you'll see how to support roles in our app, how to extend the default identity role class so you can modify the ASP.NET roles table with some additional columns and how to modify already implemented registration and authentication logic to support roles as well. That said, let's go straight to the coding part. I already support roles in the identity configuration. You can see the identity role generic type parameter here. That's the reason roles are supported with the identity configuration. Now, to continue, I want to show you how to extend the ASP.NET role table the same we did with the ASP.NET Identity User table. So first, I need to create a new class. Let's name it Role. And it must inherit from the Identity Role class. Here, I want to extend this Identity Role with an additional string description property. Once I execute my new migrations, you will see that the ASP.NET Rules table will be extended with this column as well. But before I do that, I need to add a program class modification. Here, instead of using the default identity role class, I will now use my custom role class. Now, before I move on, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client C -sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Ok, to continue, I have to modify the DB context class. In this case, I need to add two more parameters for the identity DB context class. I need the custom role type here and the type for the primary key. At this point, I can add some seeding data for my roles. So, to do that, I will create a new folder named seed configuration and inside a new class named role configuration. This class must inherit from the iEntityType configuration interface with a role as a generic type parameter. I won't explain this configuration logic a lot because it is a part of the EFCO migration logic and if you want to learn more about it and all the other migration functionalities, you can watch my video where I cover this topic in detail. The link is in the description below. Now, I can implement the interface and use the builder parameter to call the hasData method that enables us to seed some initial role data. Here, I will create a new role object and populate the required properties. You can see a predefined ID, the name, and the normalized name properties, which are default properties from the identity role class. But you can also see my custom description property. Also, let's add another role here with populated properties for the admin role. Well, that's it regarding this class. And I can modify the DB context class again. Here, I need to call the apply configuration method and provide an instance of my configuration class. And that's all. As I said, to learn more about this logic, feel free to watch the mentioned migration video. Now, let's create a new migration and name it initial role seed. And also, let's update the database. Now, if I check the ASP.NET roles table, you can see a table populated and also a new column added. Now, since I already have a registered user from one of the previous videos, I want to connect it with one of the roles. In this case, I will use the admin role. So, to do that, let's create a new class in the configuration folder and name it user role configuration. This class must inherit from the iEntityType configuration interface as the previous configuration class, but this time I will use the IdentityUserRole interface 
with a single string generic type parameter. I am using this new class because now I am applying this configuration for the ASP.NET user roles table. This is the table that connects users with their roles. So let's implement the interface and paste the seed code here. And please pay attention that for you this user ID can be different because we created that user with a registration flow and a random ID was generated for that user. As you can see, it is the same ID I have in the users table. With this out of the way, I have to modify the DB context class again and use the apply configuration method and provide a new user role configuration instance as an argument. Great. Now let's add another migration named user role populated and update the database. Excellent. I can check the table now and we can see the user connected to the admin role. So this looks great and you saw how we can extend the roles table and use migrations to populate both the role and the user role tables. With that done, I can continue with the project and modify the register user action. I want every new user to have a visitor role applied as well. And for that, I will await the user manager's add to role async method and provide the current user as a first argument and the name of the role for the second one. And as you can see, that's all I need to do to connect a newly created user with the existing role. So, Let's run the app and create a new test user here. You can see I already prepared the test user, so let's just send a request. And you can see I got a 201 response, which means that my new user was created and a visitor role was assigned. Well, I can check the user roles table and as expected, a new user's ID is connected to an existing visitor role. Okay, now I have to modify the authentication action as well, because when a user authenticates, I want to have their role as part of the claims stored inside the JSON Web Token. So to do that, I will extract roles for the current user by calling the user manager dot get roles async method and provide the user argument here. After I have all the roles of the current user, I can simply pass those to the create token method. Of course, this means I need to modify this method inside the JOT handler class. I have to provide an additional parameter here of the iList string type named roles. And also, since I use the getClaims method to return all the claims for the token, I have to pass this roles parameter as an argument. Okay, so let's just modify the getClaims method as well. And here, provide an additional iList string roles parameter. And then, below the claims part, use a for each loop to iterate over all the roles. And use the claims.add method to add a new claim with the role type and the role as a value. Okay, this one looks good. And let's just modify the test controller's action and protect it not only from unauthorized users, but also from the authorized users that don't have the admin role assigned. This roles property accepts a string as a parameter, but I don't have to provide only a single role name here. If I want to allow access to all the users with multiple roles, I can do that as well by adding another role name here. Additionally, if we have a bit more complicated logic regarding roles, we can use policies. Just for this example, I can create a new policy inside the program class. And then, instead of using the roles property here, I can use the policy property with the name of the policy. In my personal opinion, I would only use policies for a bit more complicated logic. And for the simple one, as this one is, the previous implementation with the roles property is perfectly fine. But since we already have a code disease, let's test it. Let's run the app and 
First, send the GET request without the authenticated user. And of course, I get the 401 result. Now, let's authenticate our admin user. You see, I have a token, so let's use it. And paste it into the previous request. Now, I can send this one one more time. And I have access to this endpoint. But if I authenticate the visitor user and copy this new token and paste it inside the previous request, after I send the request, I get a forbidden status code as a result. This means that the user was authenticated, but they don't have enough privileges to access this specific endpoint. Awesome. Now, you know how to use roles with Web API authentication and how to extend the default ASP.NET roles table with some additional columns. So, if you like this one and learned a bit more, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons because it helps the channel a lot. And hit that bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. With that said, I can finish the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, stay awesome and all the best.